Hello everyone, Sean McCaffrey, weekly wrap up time. Today, not going to be talking about any games, just going to kind of be setting the stage for the Super Bowl because right now it is the bye week that leads up to the Super Bowl. So there's media day and all kinds of events going on that kind of build up the hype for the Super Bowl. So I'm going to be talking about some storylines coming into it. Going to be talking about some of the big names uh, for the game, kind of players to watch out for. And also I'm going to be talking about some offseason moves that have already occurred because for 30 out of 32 NFL teams, they are in their offseason. So they're trying to get as ready as possible as they can to hopefully be playing in the Super Bowl next year. So going to be talking about some of the biggest storylines coming out of that so far. So looking at the Super Bowl, the teams that are playing in it, the Chiefs representing the AFC, the 49ers representing the NFC. Right now, the betting odds show the 49ers as two-point favorites. So very, very close game. Honestly, basically a pick em game. So it could really go either way. When you look at the rosters, in my opinion, I definitely think the 49ers have the better overall roster just from top to bottom on defense and on offense. But what the Chiefs have going for them is they have Patrick Mahomes, who is the best quarterback in the National Football League. It's so tough to bet against him, to pick against him, because he just seems to always turn it on in the big moments. So first, looking at the 49ers, the big players to watch there on offense, they are absolutely stacked with playmakers. Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk at wide receiver, both of them are incredible. George Kittle at tight end, and Christian McCaffrey at running back. He's the best running back in the NFL. And the offense is led by Brock Purdy. Honestly, I don't care what anybody says about him. I do think he has done a great job in this 49ers offense. A lot of people think his success is solely because of the playmakers around him. But honestly, he is so efficient. He always makes the right read. Always seems to be making accurate throws. Uh, Obviously, he's had his mistakes, but he's only in his second year in the league, and he's done a great job in this offense. So I give a lot of credit to Brock Purdy leading that offense. And flipping over to the defensive side of the ball for the 49ers, some big players to watch out for there. Really, I would say the biggest one, Fred Warner, he is an incredible player, a big name to watch out for there, but also Nick Bosa and Chase Young, defensive ends for them. They will be playing a large role in this because if they can just get some pressure on Patrick Mahomes, hopefully it will help out the defense a lot. So big names to watch out for on the 49er side of the football. When it comes to the Chiefs side of the football on offense, Truthfully, wide receiver wise, they are just not that great. Definitely, at least compared to the 49ers. Uh, they have players like Rashid Rice on Rashid Rice out there, Marquez Valdez Scantling as well. And their big patch catcher, the big name pass catcher they have is Travis Kelsey, tight end. Right now, he's probably still the best tight end in the league, although he has definitely aged a little bit. He's at 34 years old now, so he's on the back nine of his career. But He still somehow is incredibly productive. Just last week, he went over 100 yards and got a touchdown. So he's still playing at a very high level. And him and Patrick Holmes, Patrick Holmes, the best quarterback in the league. He really, it comes down to him and what he can do in this game because he is going to be the difference maker for the Chiefs on offense. Flipping over to the defensive side of the football, really the biggest name to watch out for there, Chris Jones. It He is a game breaker when he is on and he if he can get pressure on Brock Purdy that would be absolutely gigantic for the 49ers or for the Chiefs to be able to do that against the 49ers so we'll see it should be a pretty good matchup between two really good teams uh and one other storyline I want to mention coming up to this week just happened a few days ago the 49ers have been very upset about their field their practice field conditions because they are already out in Las Vegas where the Super Bowl is taking place and UNLV a college nearby. They are practicing there and the field apparently, according to the 49ers, is saturated with water. It's like walking on a sponge according to them. Obviously, that does not make for a great practice service and practice surface. And the Chiefs are practicing in the Las Vegas Raiders practice facility, which is a much better environment. The field conditions are infinitely better than it is at UNLV. So the 49ers, the NFL has handled that. They have changed the field conditions, but the 49ers were not happy about that at all. Also, media day, that's all happening. It's really fun to watch a lot of these events and see kind of the questions that these players get asked. You get to see a lot of their personality during this week for the Super Bowl. So I highly recommend 
uh, paying attention to that and watching for that. And then the final thing I will mention about the Super Bowl, it's always kind of fun this time of year when people talk about these crazy prop bets that you can do. Uh, it's always nuts what you can bet on. So you can bet on something as simple as the coin toss. Is it going to be heads? Is it going to be tails? You can bet on if the opening kick is going to be a touchback or if it's going to be taken out of the end zone. You can bet on the color of the Gatorade that is going to be poured on the head coach that wins the Super Bowl. You can even bet on the length of the national anthem. It's pretty insane what these bets are. I'm obviously not going to give any recommendations on anything like that. Or Even in the Super Bowl, I just recommend watching the game, and hopefully it's a good one and a close one uh, that comes down to the wire. Now, moving on to off-season moves in the NFL. Uh, really just what I'm going to be talking about is the head coaching moves. Those are the big changes that have happened over the last few weeks. Kicking it off, Jim Harbaugh, who just won the national championship with the University of Michigan, is leaving the university and going to coach the Chargers, who just got rid of their head coach, Brandon Staley, this past year. Jim Harbaugh had a lot of success actually with the 49ers back in the day, going to Super Bowl, going to a number of NFC championship games, and now he's going to be coaching the Chargers. The Titans, another big storyline, Mike Vrabel, they fired their head coach. That's the big storyline that came out of this. Mike Vrabel is a very well-respected head coach around the league. I was shocked to see him get fired, especially with the success he's brought the Titans. But now they have brought in Brian Brian Callahan, the offensive coordinator of the Bengals, to be their next head coach. The Raiders... They brought in Antonio Pierce to be their next head coach. He was actually the interim head coach after the Raiders fired Josh McDaniels. His story is really cool because Antonio Pierce is a former player, a really passionate player, a really loud player. uh, And to see him get the job, honestly, he deserved it. The Raiders look so much better under his leadership than they did with Josh McDaniels. So it was cool to see him get that Raiders job. And then... Three of the biggest head coaching storylines that came out of this offseason so far. The Seahawks got rid, basically forced Pete Carroll into retirement by removing him. Uh, A shocker right there. Pete Carroll is in his 70s, but it was surprising to see him kind of be forced into retirement by the Seahawks. And they have replaced him with Mike McDaniel, Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator of the Ravens this past year. And the biggest storyline coming out of the NFL head coaching changes is, of course, Bill Belichick, the greatest head coach of all time. Bill Belichick has won six Super Bowls, and the Patriots decided to fire him. They replaced him with Jared Mayo, who was already on Bill Belichick's staff. And really, what's very surprising about this is that Bill Belichick did not get a job in this head coaching cycle. A lot of people speculate that maybe they... uh, He wants too much control over the organization. They're concerned about his age, being that he is in his 70s, and how much longer is he really going to be coaching for. But really, I think it maybe it's a combination of the fact that some teams don't want to give up control. Maybe it's also Bill Belichick didn't like any of the openings uh, that he wanted that were available at this point in time and decided that maybe taking a year off of coaching would be the right move. So very interesting to see Bill Belichick go down, uh, but... He is the greatest head coach of all time. No other coach has won six Super Bowls. So all credit to him and everything he did with the Patriots. Shocking to see him go, honestly. I never. It's almost like you never thought you'd see the day. And one other head coaching change that I have to mention is from college football. Nick Saban, head coach at Alabama, arguably the greatest college football head coach of all time. He also decided to hang it up and retire this past year, walking away from the University of Alabama. He is an incredible head coach. He had an incredible amount of success at the University of Alabama. And so, in my opinion, I do think he is the best college football head coach of all time. So, this was Sean McCaffrey with the weekly wrap-up. Hope you guys enjoyed.